So we want to focus on the spirituality of almsgiving and also renew uh, as a concrete expression of giving alms, uh, renew our participation in our 541 generosity challenge. But first, the spirituality of almsgiving. If you've been following Bishop Barron's gospel, daily gospel reflections, he addressed this very topic just this past week. Echoing St. Thomas, the angelic doctor, Bishop Barron said this, we must distinguish between ownership and the use of property. We have a right to ownership through our hard work or inheritance, fair enough, but with regard to the use of those things, then St. Thomas says, we must always be concerned for the common good. Remember that principle that we went over in Catholic social teaching from our fall uh, sermon series. We had a whole one dedicated to the common good. That, that's an extraordinarily powerful claim, Bishop Behrens continued, though it's stated in rather sober language. Yes, you have a right to, uh, to property, to ownership, but when and how you use what you own, that is always a matter of the common good, Espe which especially includes Lazarus at your gate whoever is suffering and in need. End of quote. So that's an important distinction to make. We do have a right to ownership, a right to property. That's a good thing. But when it comes to the use of our property, the use of what is in our possession, everyone is called to look out for the common good voluntarily. This flows from God's commandment to love your neighbor as yourself. See, our possessions are entrusted to us by God in order to be a means by which we express love and thus become more God-like, to become more like God in whose image we were made. The spiritual practice of almsgiving develops and is an expression of our generosity and our magnanimity, which fashions us to be more like God in his generosity and magnanimity. And we don't need to be rich in order to practice almsgiving, right? How many times have we seen a video of, of that poor person on the street receiving some food or money, and then that hidden camera, supposedly hidden camera, catches that poor person sharing that food or money with another poor person down the street? Yeah, some of it might be, some of those things might be all set up and everything, but still, it, it, it's evident that even the poor can practice almsgiving with the little that they have. And would you say that that poor man is more free or less free than the materially richer person who feels so insecure that they can't bear to share any of their wealth or possessions? That poor man lives with greater freedom, right? Because he freely uses the possessions he has instead of his possessions owning him. And so as we discern our participation in this year's 541 Generosity Challenge, let's truly see it as a spiritual practice, something by which we develop the virtues of generosity and magnanimity as a means of expressing our love of God and love of neighbor.